Well, I ask, I ask if you're anonymous because so, so many people are. And I think in this world, in this game, uh, you just never know. So, well, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. A lot of people feel that they have to be, um, I mean, like I'm the coordinator for WDI Ontario. So I, I spoke at the million March and I'm very open about my feelings. I don't know if that's going to be a thing for my school but it hasn't been so far so well <laughs> how about how about we start sam tell me tell me a bit about you tell me a bit who, who are you and 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 yeah who are you um i am a mother of a 12 year old daughter and a wife and i am the coordinator for wdi ontario um, so WGI Canada is, um, part of the, the international organization, WGI, which is Women's Declaration International. Um, and so I'm the coordinator for the Ontario area and we are a feminist group. Um, right now, the main objective really is fighting against gender ideology, because if we're not able to define what a woman is, it's going to be fairly difficult. Yeah. to advocate for our rights <laughs> yeah and yeah. you were involved on September 20th you got involved what was that like for you um it was I was shocked by how many people were there where were, can uh, I can I ask where, where, where you were for for the marches Windsor. Windsor Windsor yeah but um but yeah so that was it, it was a good experience I mean I was um I was I was very shocked by how many people were there of course, I wasn't thrilled with some of the things that the media did. I actually wound up emailing them and telling them that I was going to have to um, to bring forth a libel and defamation case unless they <laughs> they corrected one of their articles, which they did. But uh, it was still an upsetting experience. What because happened? Not a lot of people see corrections. Um, they basically uh, is this like they, a local? I guess it's a local publication. Like the it was CTV News Wednesday, right? So they took one statement that I had made about gender ideology, and they just twisted it in such a way that it's it just sounded like I had no idea what I was talking about, yeah. and then they completely fabricated a statement that I had made about sexual orientation. And I didn't say a single word about sexual orientation. Yeah. Um, there are actually a lot of lesbians within um, WDI. It's, it's a feminist organization. Um, so, you know, that we do have a, a lot of lesbians and bisexual women. So I was very upset by the fact that they kind of suggested that I was saying something negative about homosexual people. So I did, I, I, I emailed them and actually she, the woman who was, I guess, the boss of the reporters, emailed me back and said, I apologize, we've made the correction. They were just paraphrasing. Uh, and I thought... So you got, you got paraphrased really in a quote. Yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting yeah. justification. Yeah. So, but other than that, I mean, I do think, I do think the march itself went really well. So... Yeah, tell me a bit about uh, WDI. What do you guys get up to? Um, it's more than anything. It's, it, it's, we exchange information from the different provinces. Uh, we have obviously coordinators of all of the provinces and territories. We meet every month or so. The leader of WDI Canada is an incredible woman, Linda Blade. She was a, an Olympic athlete, uh, in her youth. And she, she's actually the woman, I'm, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the CPC convention in September when her, she had put the, put forth the proposal to give us back our spaces, our yep. sports, um, and to redefine woman as an adult human female. Well, and I found out she's speaking, uh, in the Amy Ham case as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Looks like she is. Yeah. So she's, she's our, our fearless leader, yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Um, and yeah, we, we basically exchange information and discuss the best ways to fight back in our individual areas and in general. Uh, we make sure that we're up to date on what's going on, not only in Canada, but we have a, a dispatch every couple of weeks that comes out letting us know what's going on in uh, with other WDI um, branches in other parts of the world. Yeah. So. 
So when did you when so when did you become involved? When did you start? What was the moment for you? I was um well I I had been sort of skeptical about the way things that were uh the way that things were going and then my daughter came home from school last year when she was 11 and informed me that there was a 13 year old male student in the washroom at the end of the day. I asked her how she felt about it. And she said that she felt okay. Cause there was, a, there were a lot of girls in the washroom. It was the end of the day, but she said she would have felt scared if she'd been alone. So I spoke to her principal the following day and was basically told this is the policy from the school board. There's nothing we can do. Every student is allowed to use whichever washroom they're most comfortable in, to which I said, I guess that doesn't apply to the girls anymore. Yeah. Um, I went to parent council where only one mother, it was all mothers, um, only one mother seemed to disagree with me and pushed back. Everyone else agreed with me completely. But unfortunately, were they, they told me so in whispers afterwards, basically. They didn't want to say it in front of the group. Um, which uh, So when I finally went to the school board, I none of them wanted to come. So I was alone. Um, the school board tried to push back a lot. They tried um, discouraging me from speaking. They tried ghosting me multiple times. And when I persisted... They ultimately told me that I would not be allowed to speak at the public meeting, that yeah. I would only be, be allowed to speak at their private meeting. And it turns out that meant I could talk to them as they ate their dinner. It's very awkward. Yeah. <laughs> and I did. I did. I, I made my case there. And uh, they, most of them barely even looked at me. It was it, like, as I said, incredibly awkward. Uh, they made it also so that I had no support, right? We weren't in the typical school board meeting where there would have been other parents, n not maybe from my school, but certainly there could have been other parents there. So it was just me and my husband <laughs> and about 14 of them. And they basically ignored me. One woman um, pushed back towards the end. Um, I will say though, Linda Kin, who I believe has been pushed out now of our local school school board, she did speak up and say, I don't know why this could not have been discussed at the at the public meeting right because their their excuse was confidentiality and I didn't use a name of the certainly not the child but not even of the school so there was no reason why it should have been a confidentiality issue yeah. I was speaking to the larger issue yeah um and she so yeah she said I don't know why this couldn't have been um spoken about at the public meeting and the chair Kathy Cook uh just shut her down immediately and said that's not a question of clarification and I said, well, I thought it was relevant. And she didn't, uh, she said, well, I'm chairing this meeting. And then that was sort of it. <laughs> so that's interesting that you said the, at the parent, parent council meeting, they, they basically all agreed with you, but no one would speak, no one would say it. And even though they all knew that they agreed and that, well, it's like, imagine those 10 people, nine agreed with you yet eight won't, won't say something. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah, I did have one other mother, I should say that she she did say her daughter also was uncomfortable and just had stopped using uh, using the washroom by herself. So yeah. she did speak up and say that in the group. But yeah. other than that, yeah, it was everyone was very quiet when I was speaking. And they came to me afterwards and and, and said that they agreed with me. And that's, that's the atmosphere, unfortunately, that's been... De very deliberately created, right? Everyone's afraid. Like tippy toe even though, walking on eggshells. Is it like that? Yeah. Even though many of them were stay-at-home mothers with no job to worry about, they were worried about their reputations, I guess, or just... To be called mean women. names. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, the other interesting thing in your story is this private meeting. So I'm a little bit confused. I spoke to, well, um, someone in my network, actually, uh, um, Jess from uh, Dur Durham District Concerned Parents had a meeting or, or arranged a private meeting with her uh, board chair and vice chair and, and some other people where they, they gave a presentation, but it, it that was very different from what you describe. You describe almost like all of the board, am I wrong in thinking it's all of the board members having a meal and then you're invited to their 
almost social meal, private meal to yes. speak. But I, I wasn't eating. It was so incredibly awkward. But, the, but the, that's what I'm saying is the image that I'm getting in my mind is almost like it, that would make me feel uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable. It was. I, I actually it, have on my YouTube channel, you can see um, I, I, my husband did his best to record it. We weren't sure if we were allowed to record it. There was nothing specifically saying though, and anything they sent to me that I couldn't. Yeah. So he had his cell phone in his pocket. So it's not the best of videos, but you can still hear what I'm saying and you can see the, a few of them. And it's so incredibly awkward. It was I feel just... like they listened to you. Most of them did not. Yeah. One of them, I think, felt obligated to listen to me because she had called, she was one of the two of them that had called me to try to discourage me from speaking. And she said to me, um, she had told me that she was, uh, she had studied women's studies and was, you know, about feminism. And I had said something to her along the lines of, then it seems very odd to me that you wouldn't be prioritizing females yeah. in this situation. And so she listened. Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm just noticing that my, my laptop is going to die. I'm going to grab the cord and I'm going to be right back. So sorry. There we go. Okay. But, we're good. You know where I want to, I want to start off again from, uh, the, the other curious thing to me was that you said this, this awkward private meal meeting, uh, was offered to you because of uh, uh, privacy concerns, privacy concerns, uh, confidentiality, I think is the word that you use. So mm -hmm. the interesting thing is, you uh, tell me if I'm, here, if I'm understanding this correctly. So you wanted to have a meeting to talk about this policy, not, not this individual, although you, there was an event, you wanted to talk about the policy and, and the effects of the policy and that your daughter is uncomfortable. They say, no, there's some privacy concerns, there's some confidentiality concerns, come to a private meal to talk about it but the interesting thing is what what are, what what needs the confidentiality is it that the, you know it almost seems maybe this is my tinfoil hat but it almost seems like they just don't want to talk about it publicly rather That's than exactly what it was is that is that the impression that you got it was it was a convenient excuse they didn't want this school board is very i don't even know the right word they 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 try so hard to avoid talking about anything that might be difficult. Um, they're, they gaslight people. They've, I've, I've witnessed, or I, well, I wasn't there in person. I shouldn't say, but I have seen videos of them actually almost bullying a grandmother that came to speak about books. In, in so I, I'm semi foreign. Remind me which school board this is. This is a, a greater Essex County district. School right. Board. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was, I, I had made it very clear on the phone. I said, I'm, I'm in no way going to mention the student. I'm not even going to mention the school. I'm speaking to the broader issue here. So there shouldn't be any confidentiality concerns. And she, uh, the woman, Melissa, I can't remember her last name, but she shut me down. She just said, well, you can speak to us at the private meeting and that's it. Yeah. And I said, okay. <laughs> so how long ago, how long ago was that? That would have been almost a year ago, I want to say. Have you pursued it since? I have. Well, I got involved with WDI yeah. and I've tried to, I, I'm working on getting more people in our area together to fight against it. Unfortunately, I'm still getting a lot of the, I'm so glad you're saying something. I agree with you completely, but I can't. Yeah. So, and I mean, I know there are my sister-in-law and, um, and, uh, some other people who definitely are in, in agreement with me, but they, I, I know that because of their jobs, they're not able to. Is it a fear of, um, I know there's a lot of, uh, fear among people to be labeled as right-wing extremists. I don't know yeah. if that's what it is, you know, like yeah. I agree with you, but I kind of don't want to be, I don't want to be seen as the extremist because, yeah. that you know, I, I am full history of lefty. All my family are lefty. My, you know, my entire uh, social circle, has always been lefty. And as soon as I uh, decided that I was going to speak my mind on this particular topic, all of a sudden I'm, I'm right-wing. I'm a conservative. I'm, 
on this. And, you know, it is uncomfortable. I mean, I, I can sympathize in a, in a way uh, because for some reason, among a lot of people, even even what but you, the question is, even why is being labeled conservative such an uncomfortable thing for some people? I, wonder I don't know, especially not in Canada in 2023. Yeah, I, I feel that, you know, with um, with everything that's gone on and I, the conservative party seems more sane than anyone right now. I know a ton of feminists who are currently calling themselves politically homeless. Yes. Who have basically said if if Poliev takes up this cause um, that, you know, they it, it passed with 87 percent at the CPC convention, um, you know, to support women, they've said they're going to be voting for conservative for the first time in their lives because we need somebody to, besides PPC, you know, to, to stand for us. So you don't feel, you, you really don't feel the school board is listening? Not at all. No. And because of that, you feel like you have to, uh, well, what are you doing? So if, if they're not, if they're not listening to you in meetings and you, you're gathering people and these people agree with you, what, what are you doing? Um, well, we did, we had a protest. Um, this was actually not directly about the school board. It was just about the policies of allowing males into female only spaces. So Heather from Cosbar, I don't know if you know what Cosbar is. Heather Mason? Yes. She's an ex-prisoner. She advocates for, uh, getting males out of female prisons. Is that right? Yes. And spaces in general. So she came down to Windsor and we held a protest, um, against males and female spaces. So we do things like that. We protest. I am planning to, if, if I can get enough people together to try to organize something else, to go to a school board meeting. I don't, I don't know if they'll let us speak there. Are you one of the school boards that, uh, have locked parents out? Has that been happening? Yes, it did. The last meeting um, of the school board last year, there were some parents who were planning on going. They weren't planning on doing anything wrong, but they were planning on bringing up some issues and holding the school board trustees accountable for their actions. And they decided that, yeah, they would they would lock us all out. And then that resulted in a, a protest outside. And the hilarious thing about that was I was there and there were a a number of counter protesters that came. And when you asked those people why they were there, they had no idea. They didn't even know what they were doing there. Yeah. Yeah. That's really tough that we were, pardon? It's really tough because uh, one thing, so before I got involved with a lot of this, I, I would have also looked at people going, why are these people protesting? Don't they have something better to do with their time or blah, blah, blah. You know, like you, you don't necessarily understand. But what I've come to understand is that a lot of parents have been making efforts. They they have been going to school board meetings. They have been trying to do things in the way that you would expect that you could, um, only to find that not only are they not being listened to, but like you say, if you're not being listened to, you're being sidelined, you're being ignored uh, for something quite important to do with your own child in, in a school. Well, wh- what else have you got to do? So parents eventually start to protest and you have these little protests that happen all the time and then they don't want the protests anymore. And then they start locking out the parents. And it's like every so when people say, why are you protesting? Why do you just go to the school board meetings and all this? What they don't realize is that you guys have been through that. Mm-hmm. And every time you try to uh, express that you're not okay with something or that you, even what you want to discuss it, you're even more uh, excluded. That's, that's kind of what I'm seeing across Ontario, really. Yeah. And even not only Ontario, in BC, I've yeah. seen school boards just turn the mic off on parents. Yeah. When, as soon as they go down a certain road that's deemed all the phobes and ists, uh, their, their mic gets cut off. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, so do you think the protests are working? Do you think that's having a a positive effect or we just keep doing them anyway? I plan to keep doing them no matter what. I do think that they are raising awareness in the sense that there are people who come who have really no idea. I mean, you mean the counter protesters? Just people who walk by even too. Right. Okay. To, you know, when we had our, our protests about the women's spaces, you talk to people who walk by and they don't know that, you know, 90 plus percent of the men coming into our spaces are fully intact as in have not had bottom surgery. They, they think trans women and they're picturing this vulnerable, 
little um, individual who's had all their surgeries and they're just, you know, so marginalized. And what they're not realizing is that that's the vast majority of the times these days, that's not what we're dealing with. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit more. So um, there's a lot of pushback saying that, uh, you know, women are just being, they're just being transphobic, right? They're just, they're just being exclusive. They're being horrible. They're not, they're not allowing people to be their true authentic selves. And, and I don't think that's necessarily your position, right? So like you just described, it's really um, that there are gray areas. uh, And when you have, uh, males or people assigned male at birth or whatever you want to call that who uh, come into female spaces there's there's issues that that can arise from that so do you want to absolutely there are yeah there are there are high school girls who are being forced to get undressed around male students in some cases there are but what do you mean by forced to be undressed around male students? Couldn't like, so I'm going to play well, de- the reason I'm doing students. that is I'm going to play devil's advocate. So I'm somebody like I walk by, I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean forced to get dressed undressed in front of male students? Well, because any student is allowed to use the locker rooms that they feel most comfortable in. If any male student decides that they now identify as a girl um, on any given day, they can decide to use the girl's locker room at which point the girls are now forced to either the general, I know at my high school, there were two individual cubicles and those were generally used by the really, really shy girls. And the rest of us all just got undressed for gym class in the big communal area. Yeah. So when those male students decide that they want to identify as a girl, they are then allowed to get, undressed in the same space as the girls they yeah. get treated as if they are a girl and they don't do and they, I, they don't have another sorry? another and they don't have another place to to get they don't have another option so that's the only option for them Here's you the go thing, to gym Melanie, class that's your changing a lot place. of times they will offer another option but they don't want it because it's not affirming they want the affirmation oh, I meant for the girls oh the girls oh they no have... there's there's well well for the trans individual daughter... and the girls Yes. My daughter was told that if she felt uncomfortable using the washroom that this male student was using, that there was a single stall gender neutral space that she could use. Yeah. Um, which, which of course I naturally said, can we not ask this student to, to use that space? And I was told, well, we did offer it, but un- unfortunately, um, or they didn't say unfortunately, they said we did offer it, but every student's allowed to use whichever space they want. And this is the, the space that this student has chose. Um, chosen. So unfortunately, there is, um, I don't want to get too deep on the this, but typically, when a male who identifies as a female is offered a third space, they don't want it. For whatever reason, you can imagine that, you know, uh, from yeah, but what does that tell you? <laughs> Yes, exactly. From the, from the, from the very best case scenario where they're just, they want the affirmation, you know, they want to be able, they're saying, I'm a woman, I should be treated like everyone else to the very worst case scenario where it's a predatory man who wants in because he's a predator. Well, I feel like we're teaching boys to, you know, we're teaching them to disrespect women's privacy, really. We certainly are to disrespect our girls' boundaries. We're gaslighting little girls into ignoring the natural instincts they have to be wary of males in certain situations. It's, it's insane. Yeah. yeah. So how's that? How, so your daughter's still at the same school then I imagine you're still having to, she is. yeah. Do yes. you feel like she's maybe been, I mean, I don't know, but do you feel like she, maybe she's been targeted because of your actions? Is that a problem? Luckily I have, I've asked my daughter many times um, about the, sort of temperature in her school where where all this is concerned and she's told me there are a few kids who are have really bought into all this gender ideology but she actually said the majority of the kids that she knows and spends time with do have not bought into this they they i I don't know 
how how their parents speak to them about this. I know with my daughter, I have been very um, proactive in making sure that she's not going to be indoctrinated in any way by by gender ideology. And it seems to me that uh, these other kids' parents may have done the same because I I know some of them and I know they have talked to their children about this, but the ones I don't know, um, yeah. She, she hasn't been targeted. I, and, I, and I did speak to her. I said, before any of this happened, I said, if you want me to go forward and try to do something about this, there is a possibility that you are going to be called names or, you know, something could happen. And she said, I don't care. This isn't fair. And I want you to do something about it. But how about you? Do you feel like, uh, do, you, do you feel like you've been targeted or do you feel like, no, you're doing your protests and actually my life just carries on as normal? Um, for the most part, it does. I, in all honesty, the vast majority of people that I speak to are on my side of this. They're just afraid to say it. Um, and, and certainly when you tell them things like there are rapists in women's prisons, you know, you tell them just exactly what's going on, that male students are being allowed to compete against female students in sports. Um, you know, when you, when you tell them these things, they, they get it. They understand. Um, I, I have had one or two people push back at me, um, even like on my, but you don't get targeted target. by trans activists. Um, no, I have not. Uh, my, my Twitter page is, is one thing, but it's not, I, that's not really connected to it's my not real life, life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. My Facebook is where like, it's, that's like my, I, everybody that's my friend on Facebook knows me personally. And there is, there's a, there's a parent of a trans, um, identifying male who gets into it with me at times. Yeah. We've gone back and forth on, on these issues many times. Um, but as far as actual trans activists targeting me there, it hasn't really been too bad. There was one individual who came to our protests and brought some sort of a strange weapon. But I, I honestly believe that that person was just very mentally unwell. Three, yeah, um, the, re the, reason, the only reason I ask is because uh, I, I don't get targeted uh, mm -hmm. little to nothing online. Uh, mm -hmm. Absolutely none in my life. Uh, the people that I speak to in my neighborhood or, or in the you know random people I might come across, if I would talk about it, generally agree with me. I do have some issues in my family because... Uh, they're left-leaning and I think they're not quite in the same place I am but generally you know I really don't don't get that and and when I first decided that I was going to say something lend my face I guess to to other people who couldn't other parents who couldn't um to do podcasts and things like that I feared that I would be targeted but I was like I'm going to be brave and it'll be fine and I noticed that for people who are public you know some it's almost like in certain individuals get targeted very quickly and very heavily by lots of activists and other people don't seem to have any any issue with that and so you're one of the lucky ones i actually just did another recording today with another lady who immediately as soon as she started speaking up had an immense amount of trans activist uh pushback uh violent pushback uh threats and all kinds in her in her personal life right and obviously i mm -hmm. do some podcasts with shannon boshe who got seriously targeted by the media as well mm -hmm. but then you have individuals like you and me who i don't know if it's because we're not being controversial enough uh or, or what it is but yes yeah, some of us are and some of us aren't do you do you see maybe it's maybe i don't know is it is it maybe windsor do you see a lot of that uh in windsor um, if I'm going to be honest, what I, if I'm, what I think about the reason why I don't receive as much pushback is I am a very inconvenient person for trans activists. I am an atheist and a feminist, and I am completely contradictory to everything they paint, um, you know, anti-trans bigots as, um, and, and well, yeah. there's the turf. So I, there's I the tr there's a trans exclusionary radical feminist. If you're feminist, you can get targeted. Yes, but um, I've I found in in my area, especially, it's very they they very much like to to keep that narrative going as much as possible. That anyone who's pushing back is very religious, very conservative, um, and all of these things. I a, a few times I've been to events and I've noticed that. 
everyone else was mentioned by the media and I was like, not you the only one, because I'm very inconvenient. So I think that they don't like to draw attention to the, to the, because if anyone listens to me, um, most people don't like the idea of girls, little girls going into a, a change room at a, a public pool and there being a grown man getting undressed in there with them. Yeah. Most, um, you know, most people don't like the idea of males competing, competing against females in sports. So I think that a lot of time, that part of it is that they don't, they don't want to draw attention to me at all because they don't want people hearing anything that I have to say. Yeah. What's that situation like? Is there, I mean, obviously there's the, the particular incident with your daughter at, at that school, but are there lots of issues with, um, like, has there been incidences with men going into public changing rooms at a pool, for example, in Windsor? Like, are you aware of anything like that? In Windsor, I haven't seen anything in the pool. I have, when I talk to well, other, other like, um, you know, other public, public, uh, when I talk to women from other areas, uh, um, excuse me, <laughs> my members, um, several of them go to Movadi gym. Movadi is brutal. They allow, um, even actually my uh, person I'm quite close with goes to the Movadi in Windsor and he has informed me that there are many trans identified males um, who, who are there and they use the female changing facilities my members from Waterloo to uh, Ottawa say the Movadis are the same. They're, they seem, I, I don't know if it's their policies, they seem to attract a large number of these individuals and they seem to have taken it over. And actually it's just coming to my memory right now. One of my members sis ha what messaged me about what to do for her sister because her sister's pool um, that she was going to, there were, there were now men. Um, using the changing facilities at that pool. But in a way, do you think that that's what it might take for the average person? That if, like, as horrible as it is, that it, it's almost like you you can't see the fallacies, both illogical and moral fallacies of this trans ideology until it, it until it affects you in some way. And so, for parents, what what I tend to hear a lot is that that they had no problem with it, and it came into their home, and it, they were. In, you know, uh, affirming. I don't really, I've never, I've not really met very conservative parents, usually very liberal parents who, yeah, they're like, uh, you know, if that's who you are, that's cool. Thinking it's kind of the old style, but a bit surprised. And then it's only as it progresses that they go, okay, something's not quite right here. Do a bit of research, watch the behavior. And then they realize that it's not okay. And it's, and it's almost like with uh, this situation, you know, it, maybe it's not until you take your child to the pool you've got a daughter she's six and you're taking her to the change room and oh my god there's this man out there with his bits all over the place while you, with your with your daughter you're like what's going on here you go speak to the staff at the desk you're explaining the situation well we can't do anything because because they say they're trans it and mm -hmm. it's a shame because it we're trying to tell so i know with parents i imagine it's the same with uh with the wdi that we're, we're trying, we're speaking out not because we're bigots. We're trying to help people, we're trying to warn people that there's a problem and yes. trying to point out what that problem is. And it's not about bigotry. It's about, this is, uh, it imposes itself upon others. Like if it was just about an individual, it, it, it would almost be, a, it's fine, but it's really an ideology that imposes itself upon others. Like you say, if you offer to the, uh, the, the trans kid at school, well, you can use this gender neutral individual room. Well, a lot of the times they're not going to do it right? Because it's, it's almost about imposing yourself upon other people. And I wonder, sure. you know, how are we meant to, like, what, what can we do to help inform people to let them know so it doesn't have to happen to you, but almost in a way, maybe it's a good thing that these things are happening. Maybe if, if these things happen more, I, I, again, I'm just playing devil's advocate, maybe if it happens more, more people will become alert to sort of the problem. And sometimes I think that and I'm like, well, which one is it? Should we just keep talking more or kind of maybe maybe we need to just let it happen a bit? We we discuss all the time. What's the best way to let more people know? Because yeah. when people find out what's happening, they generally agree with us. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, I do think that being impacted yourself. But like you say, even when they know, even if they agree, most people are not going to do something. (sighs) Sadly. Sadly, they're not. I, I, it, it's, it's shocked me to be honest. I've been amazed. I, <laughs> um, I, I can't understand people's reactions. I, I would have thought that once, um, this was once the whole, they're all allowed to just self-identify and come into women's spaces. I would have thought that would have been it. It wasn't it. Once, um, they started advocating for children to transition. I would have thought that would have been it. That wasn't it. it. Um, and. I, I don't, I don't know what it's going to take. I do think that when people are personally impacted, yeah, um, that that's big. That's and I, tragedy. Do, I, will say, I don't know about where you live in Windsor. My daughter could tell you, we, we cannot go to Devonshire mall without, um, seeing at least a couple, uh, trans identified males. Um, they generally dress very prom- promiscuously and, um, it's, yeah. It's, it's, would you, I'm just going to pause you there for a second. Um, would you mind turning the light in your room? Turning the light on? I was, yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to stop. I want to see you. As the sun keeps going down, it's getting you're disappearing in front of me. It was bright enough, and then and then the sun started going it down. Just disappeared. Yeah, you were disappearing. I was like, I don't want to stop. So. Well, I, I want to. I want to talk about this more, but because I think um, I think Windsor is an interesting place uh, mm-hmm. because I've spoken to a couple people. Uh, in more detail who, who live in Windsor. Um, and one in particular was telling me that they had, uh, their daughter was uh, met another kid and that kid was trans and then their daughter started becoming trans. They desisted in the end, but, but that person had a brother that was trans, had another, uh, co- like a few cousins that were trans. They had friends of friends that, like, and there was so many trans identified individuals in this one person's family. Like it was unreal. Um, and then you're telling me that you come across it all the time. I'm in the GTA right and you would expect i would expect it to be all over the place but i i don't see it very much um that's so interesting it affected my family uh but indirectly uh through through a kid who came to live with me so that's how i got to know about it um but but i actually don't see it that much but i i hear like windsor seems like like it's a some for some reason a hotbed for trans people is that is that right? It does. I, I don't, I don't know why. Is it, what is it about I, Windsor? Yeah, I don't know. Even um, my daughters, as I said, most of the kids don't fall into it. But last year there was um, a little girl who was identifying as a boy and she's desisted, thankfully. And there was another student identifying as non-binary in her grade at her school. Um and I believe there's one more still that's identifying as non-binary. Like um, such a high proportion. Right. And, and yeah, I, I, am not, I, I, I will say not... this though, in, in this area, so that my, my, my child's school board is the York district school board. And, uh, I didn't realize this at the time when I was still a good lefty. Uh, I, I, I knew my son had tr- actually quite a few trans friends and non-binary friends and gay friends. And, and it didn't occur to me at the time well, that's a lot of LGBT friends that you have. That's that's an, a really large number of LGBT. Like, it didn't occur to me. Looking back, I'm like, yeah, that's, what are the chances that all these kids are suddenly becoming LGBT? And it's not even LGBT. It's like these exotic uh, gender titles. But but in And that happens with the kids. I think it's very, very common with the kids here where I am. So it's not that I don't see it. It's, it's that... I'm not really seeing it much among the a- adult population, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. And you were telling me that you were in the mall and you, you, you always see it in the mall. I don't see it with adults here. It's rare if we go to the mall that we don't see them. We see them at the grocery store. We see them. I was at the LCBO a couple of weeks ago. I, I saw it's just it's almost everywhere I go, it seems. Um, and yeah, I, I don't really know because it seems a lot of times um it, it almost seems like people like don't even believe me when I tell them you know but it's it's it is it is true well you're not the um, first person to tell me that about Windsor which I found surprising yeah. because I thought Windsor was kind of like a small town and it's it's a little bit out the way am I am I right I think Windsor wants to not I think Windsor wants to be um seen as a really like progressive a- like Windsorites in general want to seem really progressive why do you think that is 
I wish I knew. I think maybe because for a long time we were like an automotive city, maybe seen as like really blue collar. But honestly, I don't know. Well, that's interesting because Oshawa and that area, like that Durham, Durham area, which is east of Toronto, is a similar town. It was also an autom- automotive town, very working class. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's trying to shed shed that, I guess. Um, mm-hmm. But has also become ultra, ultra progressive. Well, a, a subset of, of people have certainly become ultra, ultra progressive. And it seems like there's a lot more of that in Durham. And I'm actually pretty close to, to them, but I, I don't have that in, in my area. So that's interesting that those two areas are similar automotive, like, you know, working class towns that maybe adopted this progressiveness. It's well, it's confusing in Canada why this is such a big deal. You know, I keep asking myself, how did how did Canada get here? And how come most people I didn't know about this until it affected my family. I don't think most people really fully, even though we think it's in the news all the time. Do you think most people really understand the problem? No, I don't. Or even know that there is shocked. People are shocked. When I tell them about this, I mean, I'm, they're, they're aware that, you know, like you, you can't be alive today without knowing, you know, that there are, there, that trans is becoming more of a thing. There's pro- progress flags on uh, every single piece of anything you look at in public. So it's impossible not to see that. But as far as the actual real issues, uh, most people have absolutely no idea. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, before we go, I'm actually, uh, I'll, I'll ask you this. One thing I've been trying to uh, ask people is you've been doing this for a while and you have some experience and some insight in what works and what doesn't. Uh, do you do you have any advice? So if somebody came and watched and, they, you know, they want to get involved, they realize that there's issues with males and female spaces, but they just don't know what to do. They don't know who to contact. They don't know how to start. Do you have any uh, an, any advice for those people? Um, I do. If you, especially if you have more feminist leanings, looking for groups like WDI, which you can do by um, going to women's declaration inter- international.com, um, signing the declaration, and then you can become a part of WDI if you like. There's also COSBAR. Um, and COSBAR is Canadian is Women's Sex Based Rights. Canadian Women's Sex Based Rights. Yeah. They're, they're another, um, I'm actually, I'm a member of theirs. I, I'm just a, like a regular member. <laughs> Um, so if you have more feminist leanings going that way, also just, you have to have the guts to say something. If you're, if you're standing in a room and you're looking around and you're thinking that you're the only one thinking the things that you're thinking, I can tell you, you are not because a long, for a very long time, I thought I was, and it just takes that one person to say something. And then everyone else goes, Oh my gosh, same. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so, I keep saying the consequences are worse in your head than they are in re- reality for most people, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, you could get targeted. Um, that is a possibility. It does happen. But I think for most people, there's little to no consequence. Yeah, it, and, and, and there has definitely been a shift, without question. The pendulum is just beginning to swing back. And there's, as a result, there is some hard pushback from the other side trying to get it to keep going in the wrong direction. But I, that, that's what I would say. I would say, try, try to look for um, the organizations. There's also parents for parents rights. Um, I know in our area of Windsor who are, uh, is more for parents of school children who are concerned about the issues and just, yeah, trying to be really be open and honest about your thoughts when, when you're speaking to people and any of this comes up because most most people will agree and if you can get enough of you together perhaps you can speak at your school board and they may try to shut you down but the more of us who do it the the less they will be able to ignore us i'm just going to add something to that because i was beautiful but you know if we live in a world where we're afraid (laughs) to speak truthfully or we're afraid to speak about what we believe uh and what kind of a world is that? You know, we may feel we may we may feel fearful now. We may feel like, oh, we don't want to have a bad reputation, or I don't like to be called mean names. But imagine a world where y- you really cannot speak 
you're the truth. You can only speak what you're supposed to say. You're not allowed to have an opinion. And so if we, if we keep quiet, if we just put, put, dig our heads into the sand, that's the world that we're going to get. So it is important to speak up. I think that's beautiful. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. I really believe that it's, it's important to speak. It's important to tell the truth and it's important to share your opinion. So that was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank and you. We want our children to grow up in a world where they can, can speak the truth. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What a great note to end on. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you, Melanie.